Hello, MLA Pete Guthrie here. We finished up in the legislature uh, late July, and we'll begin our next session sometime in October. And I thought I might update you all on some of the positions and absurdity from the Notley NDP over the last session, and finish with a fitting story about how leftist ideals actually translate in practice. So stick around for that. To start, uh, it's laughable, but the NDs are still on the narrative of a $4.7 billion handout to corporations. This has become a running joke. How many times can they repeat it and how many times can we explain why they are wrong? The NDP claim uh, that we physically wrote checks to these corporations for $4.7 billion, which is complete nonsense. The Notley crew fully and completely do not understand the benefit of a lower corporate tax to Alberta and the draw to all industries by having the lowest corporate tax rate in Canada and its competitiveness throughout North America. During their tenure, the NDP attempted to increase tax by about $6 billion, but that in turn decreased net revenues for the province by $8 billion. And still they cannot understand why we reversed their tax hikes. By the way, the NDP are calling for further increases. A PTST, increased corporate taxes, personal taxes, higher carbon tax, you name it. Next, at a protest in Calgary, NDP MLA Joe Sisi said that every bill from the government were bad for Alberta, which includes Bill 8, protecting survivors of human trafficking, and Bill 28, protecting Albertans from convicted sex offenders. I think uh, Buffalo Joe must have nodded off during session and missed some of the bills introduced because if he feels that protecting victims from sex offenses or from human trafficking is a bad for Alberta deal, then it's high time that he steps away from the legislature. That said, fortunately, we passed these bills without his apparent support. Uh, a few more for the hit list include NDP MLAs such as Janice Irwin calling to defund the police while supporting blockades and Justin Trudeau's gun ban. They also called to bring extreme activist groups like uh, Extinction Rebellion into the classroom. And their NDP campaigner, contributor and board member, Gil McGowan from the Alberta Federation of Labor, labeled Albertans who wanted their kids to attend charter schools or to homeschool as nut bars and compared the UCP members to Nazis. All of this went without any condemnation from Notley's socialist NDP. She refused to denounce his comments in any way. Fortunately, our government is reversing actions of the NDP by introducing Bill 15, the Choice in Education Act, removing the focus on discovery or inquiry learning, altering course on curriculum development uh, to make it open and more transparent, and bringing attention to financial literacy for students. Finally, the anti-capitalism NDP continued their campaign against Alberta businesses. During the last election race, you may recall Rachel Notley outwardly told the public of her party's support for oil and gas. But behind closed doors, they did everything to oppose the industry. Notley's crew were against Energy East, Keystone XL, Northern Gateway, and they planted anti-oil activists like Zipporah Berman and Ed Whittingham in, inside to try to help run interference from within government walls, all the while telling the public how they supported the sector. This session, the Socialist NDP have objected to most of our government initiatives relating to oil and gas, as well as other industrial businesses, period. Most recently, uh, they voted against Bill 1, which strengthens laws against blockading transportation routes, including key products like oil by rail. They also opposed Motion 501, which calls for government to establish corridors for transportation and utility and infrastructure, including railways, roads, pipelines, and transmission lines. They actually walked out and refused to vote on Motion 18 that confirms government support for Keystone XL and recognizes that increased export options for Alberta Energy results in better prices, which benefits workers, uh, employers, and all Albertans. Motion 18 was something that 
was so off-putting to the Alberta NDP they couldn't even be in the room because it bothered them so much. Their disdain for oil and gas is quite apparent. Furthermore, the NDP continue to stand in solidarity with various activist groups who are in direct opposition to the energy sector. While protesting alongside these groups, the NDP expressed how they were so insulted by I love oil and gas signs that staff, MLAs and ministers had in their office windows at the legislature. And Notley wanted them removed, stating they were disrespectful. And I can tell you unequivocally that the NDP do not support oil and gas. And I wouldn't be shocked to find out that supporting oil and gas in the last election was a bit of a sticking point in the NDP caucus and with their members. Many of them had protested and stood against our energy sector and were noticeably angry that Notley chose, even if it was begrudgingly, to support oil and gas. But now they're back to protesting again, uh, protesting the industry that is, and uh, the NDP's actions in the House should not be surprising. The NDP do not appear to be about making legislation better or working for their constituents. It's about causing disruption. While sitting in the House, our government can stand up, correct Notley on her mistruth, whether it's false claims on the public sale of, of parks or a ridiculous assertion that government got rid of overtime pay for Alberta workers or the nonsense around the $4.7 billion in checks. And Notley, along with others, will stand right back up and continue with the same rhetoric, completely ignoring the truth. This follows the leftist philosophy expressed perfectly by Catherine McKenna, a philosophy embraced by the radical left, that if you tell a big enough lie and keep repeating it loudly, people will eventually believe it. And surprisingly, mainstream media follows them right down the rabbit hole helping them to perpetuate misinformation. There is definitely a political bent that exists with many of the media outlets, including social media. So much so that when NDP MLA Marlon Schmidt in the House celebrated the death of Margaret Thatcher and commented that he wished she would have died 30 years earlier, the mainstream media hardly thought it was newsworthy. So much of what I see uh, of the left in Alberta reminds me of the Democratic Party in the U.S. Cause mayhem and chaos, point to corruption, distract with outrageous claims, and demand investigations. Here at home, uh, Notley and her team do just that. They have complained to the Ethics Commissioner multiple times, unsuccessfully I might add. They've called on the Auditor General to step in. They've even asked the Lieutenant Governor to stop legislation that was approved in the House. They also used their activist friends and unions to seek legal actions to stop bills. Uh, trust me, if they could impeach the Premier, they certainly would try to. They want to create an atmosphere that is so full of misinformation that it is difficult to sort out the good from the bad. Naturally, an opposition party is in place to, to put forward counter ideas to those submitted by the government of the day. But these tactics fit right in with the extreme left, Nancy Pelosi's and the AOC's south of the border. It's ironic that the NDP are constantly talking about American style, American style education or American style healthcare, yet they're turning to American style politics with their outrageous tactics. This kind of destructive behavior is bad for government, uh, its officials, and it does not serve the public interest. It causes distrust and division. It's not about bringing people together. But that's part of the intent of these socialist groups, to distract from truth and reason and fact, demonize their opponents, call them xenophobes, deniers, racists. They're particularly uh, like that one. Do and say anything to put their opponent on their heels. As an example, uh, that story that I mentioned in the beginning. If you don't know, um, Casey Madhu, he is the Minister of Justice. And he's a Nigerian-born man who has endured hardship that is unimaginable to many. Uh, the long, tough road he went down to become a lawyer, 
family man and immigrate to Canada uh, to become an MLA is inspiring. Yet, during the last election, the Alberta NDP called him a white supremacist, of all things, and went at him hard on uh, social media with a nasty campaign. Unfortunately, he won a seat. During this last session, Casey was asked to speak at the legislature by organizers of the Black Lives Matters rally, only to have that request revoked. The Notley NDP, they told him he should go home and think about why he is not allowed to speak. It is absolutely appalling. These virtue signaling so-called advocates for marginalized people and racial equality have no problem slamming this minister who immigrated from Africa and has a heck of a life story to tell. As some kind of cover, the Notley NDP were later offended that KC called them leftists. <laughs> uh, seriously, I could think of a few words to use describing them and leftists as kind. Besides, it's also true. They are leftists, socialists, Marxists, postmodernists. One thing this proves is that they certainly are not progressive by the definition. This boils down to a few things, though. The left can't have KC speak at the Black Lives Matter protest because it humanizes the NDP's opponent in a good light. He would steal the show. The NDP want to have a monopoly on how the conservative government is perceived. The left wants to determine what their followers will think and control that dialogue. They know that KC's story is a remarkable one, but they have zero interest in supporting this man. If KC voted for the so-called progressive left, they would have empathy, but the compassion and understanding from the NDP and extreme left only exists if you vote the way they tell you to. If you do not support their party, regardless of your race, religion, gender, sexuality, they just see you as another idiot goose-stepping. The NDP and other far-left groups are not about freedom, speech, and open dialogue. They are part of the silence movement and cancel culture. But for now, I'll leave some of the identity politics aspects of the NDP until a later date. I want to encourage everyone to dig a little deeper. Don't believe the first dialogue or media stories you hear because it's not always reported with truth in mind. It's designed to sell and cause a reaction and usually a negative one. I'd like to make a recommendation. Tune in to question period from 150 to 240 when the legislature is sitting to hear for yourself what is going on in Alberta politics. Set your PVR or go to Hansard and invest some time to see what your government and the opposition are up to. Go direct. Hear for yourself. Thank you.